Hello and welcome to Christ Lutheran Church's third video looking at the second article of the Creed. So, the previous video is kind of the most important video you or anyone will ever see. We saw what exactly it is that Jesus did. The one most interesting, most unique person in the world, Jesus, came to do something very specific it was to take the punishment for our sins. Those sins should have been punished in us since we did those disobedient things, but instead the obedient one, the very Son of God, absorbed the punishment into himself so that it wouldn't have to happen to us. That's amazing. But there's a little more about what Jesus has done that you will want to focus on, and it will be very comforting to you. You see, it's not just that you are not punished for your sins. There's another wonderful gift we receive from Jesus and from his cross. We learn about it in one of the most fascinating passages of the Bible. It's Ephesians chapter 2. These are words that the Apostle Paul wrote to his Christian friends living in the city of Ephesus. As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins, in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature deserving of wrath. Paul starts by saying something pretty offensive. He was telling his Gentile or non-Jewish friends that they were so sinful that they did not have life. They were so apart from God that they had allegiance not to the God who made them, but rather they were following the ruler of the kingdom of the air. Do you know why air is so important? Because you breathe it in, like all the time. You are always breathing in the air that's around you. And the ruler of the kingdom of the air is the one that has infected our world with terrible things to breathe in. Do you get who Paul's talking about? He's talking about the devil who filled our world with lies, and mostly lies about God. We breathe in these lies and we don't even realize we're doing it. It's as natural as simply breathing. And that's how sinful Paul's Gentile friends were. But not just them. He then said that all of us, including Paul and his Jewish friends, were doing this too. What was the result for all these people who were not following God, but disobeying God and following the devil with his lies? All were deserving of wrath. It's like God's anger, his wrath, was hanging over us. And if God let that wrath fall on us and destroy us, it wouldn't be because God was so bad, but because he is so good and we are so bad. Yikes. Yikes. But look at what Paul wrote next. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus, in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace, expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. Notice how it says that God did stuff for us uh, with Christ, with Christ, in Christ Jesus, and again, in Christ Jesus. There are blessings that we receive from God only because Jesus did what he did, and those blessings are amazing. God made us, the dead ones, to be alive. God raised us who were so far below God. He raised us up. We were stuck in a merely earthly existence, breathing in the air full of lies, but God gave us a position of sitting in authority over the world with Jesus. We deserved God's anger but instead received his kindness. Do you get it? It's not just that God has taken away bad things from us. No, no, God has done so much more through Jesus. God has radically changed who we are. We were way, way down there, and now we are way, way up there. You see, Jesus was brought way, way down to become a nobody, the most hated person, the one who shouldn't have died, but he did. And then things radically changed for Jesus and he shares that with us. That's why the second article of the Creed, the part talking about God the Son, ends like this. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven 
and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. Jesus wins, and we share the victory with him simply because God is so good to us in Christ Jesus. You know what's really amazing? We are just getting started. Get ready for some amazing Bible teachings as we continue to work through the creed. For now, here's your home activity. Read the whole chapter of 1 Peter chapter 1, and then try to answer this question. What do you think is the one main point that Peter is trying to make? Perhaps different people will come up with different ways to express that main point, but that's good. That leads to a great discussion. God bless.